Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers today to fit some Bilstein shock absorbers to this Series 2 TD5 Discovery. First thing to do is get it jacked up safely. If you've got a ramp like us, that's even easier. But yeah, get it jacked up safely, get an axle stand under it if you're just using jacks and then we'll take the wheel off. We can see the shock absorber there sitting in the middle of the spring. Um, there's two bolts, 30mm spanner size bolts at the bottom of the shock absorber and four nuts at the, around the top turret. So once you've taken the bottom ones off and the top nuts off, we'll then go underneath the bonnet and lift the whole shock absorber up with the turret out through the inner wing. Obviously the bolts have been on quite a long time and they're going to be fairly reluctant to come off so I would spray some, some lube underneath so they're on the bottom of the threads. And then when you get your spanner on, just undo them, but probably just work them backwards and forwards every time, just to try and help to stop them snapping off, because once they've snapped off, it's obviously more of a problem. So just keep working them backwards and forwards a few times. On every little turn, there's more chance of them coming out without snapping off. So now I've got the two lower mounting bolts of the shock absorber out and also the four nuts from the turret out. Um, underneath the bonnet when you go you'll see the top of the turret you've got one main bolt that goes to the side of the shock absorber and the turret um, so you take that bolt out you'll also just need to take off the boost pipe from the bottom of the turbo just so you don't have to take it off just take the pipe off and just move it out of the way because as you're lifting the turret out there's a little bit of a tight fit so if you move it out of the way it gives you a little bit more room so I'm going to take that off now and then I'll show you exactly what, the, what it all looks like in front of the camera. So this is a shock absorber and the turret out now so you'll see the top mounting bolt you have to undo it's a captive nut on the other side so you no need to hold that you just take out that bolt and then you would lift the turret out so in the shock absorber and as you can see the lower bush on this shock absorber is absolutely worn out so it's well worth changing these so here's the new shock absorber now ready to go on and it's a pretty much a reverse of what we've just done so we'll slide it down the middle of the spring um, then we'll put the top turret in put all the bolts in loose i'd copper grease them all as well before we uh, tighten everything up properly um, and then just tighten everything up and then that's it so that's the new shock absorber in place now. All the nuts and bolts are in but, but loosely, so it's a case of tightening them all down. On the top, tur top turret ones, I would just tighten them down opposite, just so it pulls it down nice and evenly. And then the bottom two bolts, um, don't forget to put the boost pipe back on the back of the turbo, um, and then that'll be this side done. We'll move on to the other side after that, which is pretty much the same as this. The only difference here is you need to remove the header tank to get access to the top of the turret um, the, and the top um, two cooling pipes on them are, are made of, out of plastic and they're fairly brittle so I just advise to take them pipes off rather than just hold the header tank out of the way. As I said previously the only difference to the right hand to the left hand is the header tank is in the way to the top of the turret so you just have to these are the plastic pipes I talked about if they are if they, if they are old and original then you really ought to take these off rather than leave them on because if you do hold it out of the way there's a chance they'll crack. And we've replaced these fairly recently so we know they're okay. And the header tank is just clips in so you just lift it up at the back, unhook it and then you can lift it and move it out of the way. Now that gains access to the top of the turret. There's just one other thing, there's a wiring loom that just clips in the top of the turret, just a push fit plastic connector so you just have to make sure that gets out of the way before you start taking it to pieces. We've now done the front so we're ready to move on to the rear. So same again, the first thing is remove the rear wheel. So here's the rear shock absorber we can see, a little bit easier than the front. One bolt at the top and one bolt at the bottom. Um, captive nuts on each end so you only have to take the bolt out. Um, get 18mm socket or spanner. If, you can get, if you've got a windy gun you can get it onto the bottom one, the top you can't. So just get your sockets or your spanners, undo them, take the bolts out and then we'll remove the shock absorber. So fairly easy on this one. Nice. Up there, crack it off, and then just undo it nice and easy. So that's the old shock absorber off, and here's the new one ready to go on. So it's a case of putting it into place, getting the top bolt in, and then you'll have to actually physically push, push the shock absorber together so you can get the other get the other bolt in but they are fairly tough so you will have to put a bit of elbow grease in. So that's the new shock absorber fitted, tightened up, all we've got to do now is put the wheel back on and do the other side. Now it is always when you're working on any vehicle it's always a good idea to have a check around make sure everything looks okay and I have noticed while we're here that the bottom link on the leveling valve the plastic 
um, mounting point at the bottom has cracked and that's because the, the metal sleeve inside has corroded and as it's swelled up it's actually broken the plastic so although it's still attached and obviously still doing its job that's going to be a job for another day.